Thank God it's Friday. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, Biajilu Ugo. How are you today? I'm doing amazing. It is, I love your top. Thank you. It's gorgeous. We're babbing after everybody has babbied their own. <laughs> I decided to babby my own today. But uh, tomorrow, I'll be taking my, uh, my daughter uh, to the Akada Children's Book Festival. She's a published author. Mm -hmm. And she's going to be on the panel of one of the young authors oh, uh, presenting nice. her book. I'll also be with the physical copies of the book nice. for anyone who wants to uh, Have you get... bought for us in this place? No, I've not brought. Ah. Yeah, I was waiting to do a lunch. Hey. But by the time oh. I came back, money can't finish. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to now. Yes, I need to recoup before. But I definitely okay. I'll do a, like a book lunch for yeah, her. Nice. And um, I'm really proud of her. Uh, yeah. She's just 14 years old. And uh, it's showing me that, OK. A writer. We're trying. We're yeah, doing yeah. things right. Small, small, you know. <laughs> good, but we're going well, to be there. We're talking about it. I'll yeah. be there as well. Oh, yes. nice. We were there last time when I was there. Yeah. With your kids. So it's yeah. the same thing. Um, the Akada Children's oh, Book Festival. I'll fantastic. be yeah. reading my book as well. So, so Miriam actually there. wrote the forward <laughs> post <laughs> source book. Oh, so oh. Miriam's name is in front of the, you know, the <laughs> authors nice. people. Athos people, no. Athos people. <laughs> Hi, Dean Tokwe. I'm good. Um, the only thing on my wow. mind is how to sell houses. I'm, I'd like, um, I, I needed to break the jinx of selling high. So I have houses in Magodo, in Ikejajiari. Mm. They are luxury oh, not houses, land. not land. I need to break that. I've sold a few houses before, but like the past three months, it's been, I've been marketing. It's like people don't see it. Or you do houses, have, you have money, or not land now. Buy a house. Anyway, mm. eh? oh, thank you. The houses are yeah. built. Yeah, built houses within oh. Magodo Giari, Ikeja Giari, those oh, kind of. That's, that's my goal to sell. Ah, Lord, this Friday. Done it for <laughs> the Friday right. selling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, Dima. Yeah, fine. I already spoke about Akada. I was going to say I'll be at Akada Book Festival tomorrow. See me there, and also Kosi will be there. So. Yeah, oh, nice. Exciting. So come and buy books. <laughs> buy, yes. Buying books for vultures, be buying Kosi sauce yes. left alone. Just come for and me, support your What's people. your plan for the weekend? Well, today is my mom's two years. Oh. So I'm going to go to her graveside today oh. to see her. With this rain, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I, I plan to go see her I know today. You rains like on a day like it's like quite significant. Well, I hope so. Yeah. I, I mean, so I'm going to go see her. Then from there, we're going to her house. I'll just do we're just making a kara just for the neighborhood and nothing major because my dad also my dad my dad's also uh, October first. He died October first. So we're gonna combine it since mm -hmm. then. So what we do something on October first, but nothing today, just to reflect, stay home yeah, and just the rest of the day. So two years gone. Oh, I miss my mom. Time flies. Yeah, time has been... gone. Two years. Let's go on a quick break when we return. Look at the front pages of the paper. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. All right, we're going to start with the nation. Tinubu woos Nigerians in U.S. to invest back home. India suspends visa to Canada. Soludo ends fees in Anambra schools. Senate seeks justice for Mobad. Former governor's firms, others lose choice land in Abuja. Umba floors Edioga to retain seat in Enugu as governor. Shebu's office at government house re reallocated. 22 lawmakers OK move to impeach Undo deputy governor. <coughs> and bank raises 13 billion naira for subsidy paying palliatives. Okay, which story are we starting with? Um, so the FCT minister is at work, Hurricane Rike. Um, they say many prominent Nigerians, some of them former ministers, ex-governors, non-serving senators, top politicians, and um, different categories of highly placed individuals and firms have lost um, land allocated to them in Abuja by the FCTA. Um, they said the revocation notice was made public through advertorials in the paper as a result of their failure to develop their property or also for other contravention of relevant laws. Um, some of the names were mentioned, former governor of Plateau State, Joshua Darie, former governor of Cross River State. You know, it affected a whole crop of people. Even Peter Obi, uh, presidential candidate for LP as well, was affected by this. Um, some firms, um, we have Wama Bank, uh, Diamond Properties Limited, amongst many others. And um, this is just really that they have either failed to develop the property since they got this land or 
there are some laws that they have contravened. Mm -hmm. And we know that Hurricane Wike, had, he has said, you know, that he was coming to make sure that, you know, the master plan right. for Abuja was followed strictly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the Infrastructure Bank uh, said they will be providing finance to help alleviate the effects of the fuel subsidy removal. Uh, the bank has earmarked 13 billion for this purpose, and they'll be using the funds to develop transportation systems and road infrastructure. And a statement issued by the Federal Ministry of, Ministry of Finance uh, said the acting managing director in Kiru Chime and an executive director, Mr. Andrew Nweke, were the ones that made the disclosure in Abuja yesterday when they visited the ministry. And additionally, the bank said they have concession with eight states and has previously provided interventions in the provision of mass transit, uh, road and rail construction in some parts of uh, Nigeria and said that since inception of the infrastructure bank, they have intervened in the provision of, you know, different mass transit roads, rails, construction, and um, they have um, like a concession with about eight states. Yeah. Now. Okay, the Anamba State Governor, Governor Chukuma Suludo, yesterday announced free and compulsory education for public schools. Um, he said the move was in line with his vision of an all-inclusive education. So I said that from the, um, we were speaking at the Premier Primary School yesterday in Obosi. He said from the Early Childhood Care Development Education, that's ECCD, to the GSS, that's the Junior um, Secondary Schools, was going to be free and compulsory for school-aged children. He said henceforth no child within that educational range will be charged fees or any fees to acquire education. School, um, children of school age will no longer be deprived of access to quality education. Core community schools will be upgraded to smart schools in line with their vision. So that's good news. I even thought education was free across all the states. I didn't realize that some people are still paying. No, no, no. <laughs> primary is supposed to be free. Yes, I thought so. Primary school, yeah. 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 Um, I'm not sure of secondary. The Undo, States, the Undo State House of Assembly has said that they will be following the due process. They sent a letter to the deputy governor. Um, I, I, Aye Datiwa, and they said 22, 22 of the members are in support of impeaching the deputy governor based on the allegation that has been reached. However, the chairman of House Committee on Information, Olatunji Oshati, in a statement yesterday, clarified that they are not, this is not an impeachment move. This is an allegation being investigated that they want to protect the sanctity of the current assembly and they will not falter in their constitutional responsibility to their constituents. So they are going to investigate. They sent a letter to the deputy governor. When the investigation is done, then they will follow through. If there is going to be impeachment, it's still an allegation, and that they would uphold the integrity um, or in the Undo State House, um, House of Assembly. But the impeachment coming in after the governor is back, based on allegations that there were mismanagement, we're well, waiting to see how the investigations will go. And if probably, it won't just be internal investigation, but there will be a neutral, unbiased investigation carried out by like maybe EFCC or ICPC so that the people of the state know that it's not because the governor is now back that they are removing the okay. deputy governor from being ambitious to become a governor in future. The punch. FG may pay 1.868 trillion fuel subsidy. Marketers forecast as 900 naira to the litre. Hmm. Pathologists conclude autopsy on Mobad's corpse. Police await results. I remain loyal. Forgive me, Shebu begs Obaseki. Court clashes. Relocates to Shagamu, Abiodun tells security heads. Consumers allege sabotage as grid collapses, worsen outage. Academic record. Delay articles request, Tinubu tells U.S. court. And currency in circulation rises to 2.7 trillion, says CBN report. Okay, which story? Um, Edo State Deputy Governor Philip Shaibo is again, as this report says, has begged the governor Obaseki for forgiveness if there's any mistake he has made as a human being. He made this at his investiture as the grand patron of the Catholic Men Organization of Nigeria, Catholic Archdiocese of Benin City. Um, you know, we've taken the story so we know all the back and forth that's been going on. And so he's once again saying that he misses his governor and he prays that God will touch the governor's hearts and all of their hearts and that whoever it is that is in between them, you know, that God will touch their hearts, that God knows that he means well, he's, he still says he's ever loyal to his governor, he made a vow before God and he's still loyal to the governor and whatever it is that he's done, he doesn't, he, didn't, he may have been a mistake but not wicked, he is not a wicked person and so I guess another um, cry or plea for 
forgiveness to the governor. It would be nice at this point to hear from the governor and just see him make a, some sort of gesture to, mm. towards reconciliation. You know, yeah. it doesn't even have to be be my body and my best friend now, but just for this back and forth. Well, seeing that he has been, um, Shaibo has been consistent in apologizing that this, this is, I, yes, I'm ambitious about becoming the next governor, but it doesn't mean that I am against you. I'm not loyal, loyal to yeah. you. Okay, let's take another story. Um, the academic record, let me, let me, how much time do we have now? Okay, we have to go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing Punch. Who has the story? I have a major headline. So the federal government may be spending about $1.68 trillion as subsidy on premium motor spirit, hmm. uh, popularly known as Patrol, from September to December this year. And this was an analysis uh, data provided by all marketers in the sector. Uh, it said that um, the pump price of petrol right now should be between 890 to 900 naira per liter, uh, based on the fall of the naira against the US dollar and the surge in price of crude in the international market. And um, petrol currently sells between, we know, about 598 naira to 617 per liter, depending on where you are purchasing from. But the government and the NMPCL have not officially admitted that subsidy. Uh, on petrol has been reintroduced. So there's, people are suspecting that with the current, uh, you know, price, by the time they buy it, that we shouldn't be paying about 500 and something to 617 uh, naira per liter, that, that likely the president is subsidizing. And then this report is also showing a form of subsidy has been paid. So the report indicated the federal government paid 169.4 uh, billion subsidy in August. And quoting a, federation, a Federal Account Allocation Committee document, uh, they are saying that um, uh, the Nigerian liquefied natural gas paid 275 million US dollars as dividends to uh, the NMPCL. And NMPCL, according to the report, used 220 million US dollars, uh, which is about 1.94, uh, 169.4 billion, which um, the rates, the U.S. rates, uh, dollar rate was 770. And out of the 275 million U.S. dollars, they used it to pay for the PMS subsidy hmm. in the review month. And there is no way the government can sustain the price of 600 and something petrol for us right now. That means subsidy is still being paid, which uh, some of them said is a good thing, but then the government needs to come clean and tell us exactly, exactly. what is happening. Have we reintroduced mm. the payment of subsidy and um, you know, how can we make it better? I said in other parts of the um, other states, uh, other countries are already buying uh, 1.5, uh, 1,500, 1,200 per litre. We are Whoa. supposed to be paying for uh, fuel now at about 900 per litre based on the current Price reality, mm -hmm. reality yeah. Okay. This if I say they should bicycles. float it totally, uh, we will feel the pain. Float what? If we say they should pay it, we'll we are the... feeding the corruption. Ah, I beg. I beg. Okay. The Lagos State Police Command on Thursday exhumed the remains of Mubad, um, the young man Ilerio Lua Aloba, who uh, was who died recently. Um, his body was exhumed yesterday. The autopsy was concluded. And, uh, but the, according to the police PRO, they're waiting for the results of the autopsy. Okay. In addition to that, the police also said that they've confirmed the arrest of the nurse who reportedly administered injection of Mobad prior to his demise on Tuesday, September 12th. Uh, but the other, oh, they're asking about the other arrests of all the other suspects. Police said they can't comment on that for now, mm -hmm. but they can con only confirm that the nurse has been arrested, has been, is in the, has been detained. And then the autopsy results is being a widow. They didn't tell us exactly how long it's going to take, but we'll wait the results and see. Hopefully, we can get some, 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 some justice. So there's a forum and called the Nigeria. Yeah, I, I, people should note that it takes a while to get um, autopsy results. results out. So I think I'm going to speed things up. We want accurate 
accuracy in the results. But we've had two shutdowns, um, grid shutdown in within a week. Mm. And the Nigerian Power Consumers Forum, which is conve um, mm. the convener is Michael Oko, said that he feels that there is a sabotage because they had been following up with TCN and TCN came out that that's the transmission company of Nigeria had come out to say that based on using the Internet of Things, they can confirm that there's been no issue over the and quality maintenance for the past 400 days. And immediately they made that bold statement that things have been stable across the grid. We had a two back to back shutdown, which was based on the fire incidents that was man-made in bearing in the bring KB transmission substation, and that's caused the two breakdowns. So the, um, the, the, the Nigerian Power Consumer Forum is appealing that there is, is not, this, this rules out lack of capacity. TCN is doing their own part. The government is doing their part to upgrade and con consciously expand transition system. But some people that do not mean well for Nigeria, mm. some people that don't want Nigeria to enjoy consistent power supply are the one that are causing the sabotage. Are hmm. who, are these, who are these people? Hopefully, people profiting from it now. Be able to help us out now. The Should people profiting from it. Let's move, in on, move on to Staley Sun very quickly. Abdul Salami Atiku will be Uzodima diplomats raise hope on new Nigeria. Again, gunmen ambush police patrol kill ASP inspector in Enugu. On guard 78, we need you back. Tinubu tells citizens in the US. Jubilation. In Enugu, as tribunal upholds Mbaz's victory, sack of governor, military orders deployed to enforce curfew in Kano, youth empowerment, UBA chair, Illuminu commanded by distinguished leaders. Okay, which story? Um, so, uh, Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, NITCOM, um, had organized a presidential town hall meeting on the sidelines of the 78th session of the United um, Nations General Assembly. Our president was there. He was speaking to Nigerians in diaspora. And the message is basically, you know, we need you here. Um, and you should come back. He says that um, Nigerians living in the United States need to overcome setbacks by adopting a new mindset that will enable them to succeed in all endeavors. He says that um, he understands, you know, he can relate with them and their struggles, especially with coming back to Nigeria. He says that he should forget the mistakes of the past, especially with leadership. And that he's always said that the problem with Nigeria is that we don't, we, he's always said that we, um, we have no reason being poor, that really it has always been a problem of leadership, but mm -hmm. that we should put that, they should put that aside and realize that this is a new Nigeria open to opportunities, business opportunities, and they should come back, you know, and take, um, and take uh, advantage of these opportunities. He talks about how proud of, he, of them he is, because most of them are well, you know, People of good behavior, yeah. they're bringing, um, making, Nigeria proud. Br making Nigeria proud, and he's proud of them. He understands their struggle. Mm -hmm. And there's also this lady who was there. She is uh, Olufumi Lola Obe. She's an inspector working with the New York Police Department. And she says that um, her job, which is coordinator of African Law Enforcement Organization, which is an association with the NYPD, is her own way of also sort of bringing pride to Africa. She's doing everything to make sure that you know, Africa is represented well in her department. So, you know, he's just encouraging them, come back yeah. home. We are ready this time. This is a new Nigeria, business <laughs> opportunities. Do not be afraid of what has mm. gone past. But I just want to say that, you know, uh, Nigerians in diaspora have heard this conversation every over time there's over. a new administration. Yeah. So I know that there will be some PTSD. Yeah. Mm. Like, oh, <laughs> are you sure? Are we calm? Yeah. But, you know. Yeah. Okay, so let me take... Um, um, Governor Umba, so according to the report, the governorship election petition tribunal sitting in Enugu upheld the um, candidacy of the Peter Umba of the PDP yesterday as governor of the state. Um, they affirmed his position. This was done by Justice Kudurat Murayo Akano. Um, mm. She has affirmed the declaration and return of Umba um, by INEC as the governor of Enugu state. Particularly, she said that um, in rejecting the LP's um, ruling. She said that the LP provided inadmissible evidences to prove Mba's certificate was forged. Um, allegations of overvoting, according to her, wrong computations of results of the LP in the three local governments. The panel held that the petitioners failed to prove their case and that the witnesses they called 
gave the exactly the same report for every single polling unit and was wondering why their testimonies were the same even for different polling units. Um, it's also held that the witnesses presented by LP were not duly accredited by agents of the INEC. Just different, different reasons, but at least the governor has been back, the PDP governor, um, Ba has been declared back and he's, um, he, he's still the governor of the state. Yeah. So, a uh, gunman yeah. killed two officers of the police mobile force uh, while another sustained bullet injuries in Enugu State. According to the Daily Sun, they said the incident happened about 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday along the Udi Ozala Road um, as the Operation Restore Peace Enugu team was on routine patrol. And uh, the source disclosed that officers uh, that have, were affected were Danjuma Joseph, an assistant superintendent of police, and Inspector Abu Elamaje. Uh, they were rushed to the University of Nigeria Teaching Hospital, UNT, and um, it took Ozala for treatment, but he could not make it. The doctors on duty also confirmed that both of them died almost immediately. Their bodies were deposited at the hospital's mortuary for, you know, more examinations. And this is just painful. People who are in the line of duty just discharge. However, the area that it happened was condoned off, and um, the police promised to carry out more investigations. That okay. Moving on to Vanguard. No, I have a story. Oh, go ahead. In the sun. The military, we know that uh, after the tribunal had taken out the APC, um, the APC, the NNPC governor. Uh, the candidate. Oh. The, the governor of um, Kano State. Kano State. That there's been on a bit of, some were celebrating a bit of unrest to quell that. The military personnel were deployed. Um, um, coffee was placed on the states. A few flashpoints. They had personnel at the junction to ensure that things don't degenerate. However, the, the, new, the new Nigerian People's Party um, tribunal that had taken place, the acting chair of the party said that it is obvious that there is a threat against democracy. That's really considering that in Kano State, NNPC, NNP, NNPP won all the elections across. Um, they won in the presidential, they won for the Senate, they won two seats in Senate, all the House of um, um, Assembly as well as House of Rep. And so how that the deduction of a particular number, 100, 165,000 votes from the governor's tally, which is what gave credence to the change in the um, tribunal saying that the other party, APC, won, for them was not acceptable. And they will take it to the Supreme Court that, they are, that N the NNP, NNPP didn't contest the presidential um, election because they felt that, based on what they had seen, it was okay that they wasn't perfect, but they didn't contest it. But that this one that happened within Kano State, they will be contesting what is happening right now because it's obvious that the, um, some powers are fighting democracy and um, taking advantage you took of the story the, yesterday. There was a I reason. Did. There was something there. there, there yeah, there I did. And that's what she's talking about, mm -hmm. the 665... Uh, yeah. Thousand votes, votes were, were invalid. Uh, invalid. Okay, another story in Vanguard. Okay, let's move on. Vanguard. Fresh strike blooms as NLC's ultimatum expires today. Let's find a story of not taking. A papa should be a gridlock. Some will look police others to blame. Says PSTT. Uh, I fought for democracy, determined to prove it can provide developments. In Umbu tells UN. <laughs> Kidnapped core members. We are making efforts to rescue remaining five. Says DG NYSC. Um, again, gunman murder, ASP, inspector in Enugu police patrol ambush. Okay, which story are we taking? Uh, the major headline. Okay. So we know that um, the um, ultimatum given by the um, Nigeria Labour Congress has, is expiring today. That's NLC. And um, they, according to the story, they said the leadership of the Congress will be meeting next week to decide when to begin the indefinite nationwide strike. Uh, but um, the Vice President, Senator Kashim Shetima, has been meeting with some members of the uh, NLC and uh, some government team to see how they can avert the strike. And according to the Minister of Finance, Wale Edu, and Minister of Labor and Employment, Simon Lalong, uh, alongside with the uh, Vice President, they said they are putting up a very fantastic package for them, so they are not worried about any form of strike that would happen. It may not happen. But um, NLC, on the other hand, said that they still have till next week to decide what they want to do in their meeting. And when questions were asked, are you sure the strike would happen or not? They said anything can happen. Let them meet first and decide what is going to happen at the end of the day. So we pray that uh, this, this, they find a way to avert this. Since the vice president is giving the body language that they are listening and they are planning something, 
Okay. More annuals. I think that's all we can take on front page review. When we return, we want our hot topic of the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Join us on the show now to tell us more about Star Times. It's the National Sales Director, Star Times Nigeria, Mr. Dili Ame. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Good morning and good morning, viewers. So you recently launched a product called Sundial. And um, I mean, wondering what's unique about it? Is it what, kind of, what, is, what is it exactly? Is it a TV? Is it a decoder? What is it? Yeah, thank you very much. It's a, a TV. Okay. Yes, but we popularly call it a big decoder. Okay. Yes. You know, in the market currently, you have uh, basically two types of TV. Mm -hmm. The usual analog TV and, of course, uh, the um, smart TV. Mm -hmm. But now, we have come in the middle to launch uh, a TV that is based on the latest technology. Okay. So this TV, Sunday TV, has a, a decoder inside Oh. Yes, uh, if you call it combo decoder, double decoder, or a twin decoder, you are right. But basically it has uh, two decoders embedded in the TV, such that uh, you can directly connect antenna to it, or dish, and this will give you over 300 uh, channels. Hmm. So, um, of course, when you have a decoder embedded in the TV, the picture quality is uh, different, it's, uh, mm -hmm. far better, you know, because they are together. Not like when you use a, a cable to connect from a decoder to and to a TV. TV. Yes, oh. so the picture quality is uh, of the highest level. That's interesting. That's interesting. Yes. Because, and also, so I'm wondering, what would it look like? What are the sizes? Are they huge or are they small? Yes, What's currently we have uh, 32 inches and uh, 43 inches. Yes, but in the near future, we're going to be having uh, 55 inches and uh, much more bigger sizes. And then there will be a smart uh, version of it, such that you also have a decoder embedded in it, right? Mm -hmm. You have a Star Times uh, app, Star Times On, also in it. That's the smart. And of course, uh, the, so it is... Options galore. Galore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so are they designated um, dealers for this uh, Sunday TV? Can we know them? Yes. You, you know, Star Times, uh, we've been on. Uh, I was here, on the, but not on your show anyway. But for the first time, 13 years ago, ah. we talk about uh, Star Times. And since then, we have uh, done a lot, spreading Star Times across Nigeria, uh, making sure that uh, we bring to every community where uh, uh, Nigerians can have access. You know? So we have uh, so many dealers out there. Mm -hmm. So virtually in every neighborhood, you could find a Star Times uh, dealer. dealer. And then you can, of course, we sell it, the TV. We have uh, 55 uh, customer experience uh, centers across Nigeria. So we also sell directly in those locations, sell through the dealers. We have partnership with some uh, financial institutions currently. Uh, Lapo Microfinance Bank is the biggest uh, microfinance bank in Nigeria. And they have uh, over 500 branches spread across uh, various uh, communities. And so I, want, I wanted to ask you about flexible um, payments, yes. because I know that that time came in with affordability. So yes. what's the option for flexible payment? Yes, the first payment is uh, done through the financial institutions that we are partnering with. Oh. Uh, number one among them is uh, um, um, Lapo Microfinance Bank. Okay. We also have uh, recently signed an agreement with uh, Polaris Bank. Oh, okay. Yes, and some other uh, banks. So we're providing a, a big platform so that we know that uh, people and most of the customers at this time want a situation where they can pay, buy now, pay later, or pay small, small, or on installment, whatever name you choose to call it. Yeah. But I'd love to see what the screen looks like. Because in my head, I'm thinking, decoder embedded, is it, is it bulky? Because now we all like thin CVs. So 
And I'd love to see what it looks like. But I'm sure. we actually have one uh, within. Oh, and, okay. Uh, so we we'll get I to don't see. Don't know whether. Yeah, get to see. Like, let nice let me say answer. more about it. The TV itself is frameless. Okay. It is uh, the very slim. Okay. You know, okay. just like your Android phone. It's, uh, oh. wow. it's designed based on the latest technology. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so really you slim. can uh, be Let's sure see. that... Uh, Maybe next time we'll see pictures. All right, so let's talk about the Screen Perfect. Uh, we know it's a reality show that you're working on. Well, what is it about exactly? What's the objective? Yes, the objective is to promote uh, uh, talent, you know, uh, young talent. We decided, you know, just to uh, give some background. Um, 13 years ago, when Star Times uh, came in, we had a very clear mind of what we want to do. Uh, first of all, to create the infrastructure required to transmit the signals to every home. And this we have done by covering the entire Nigeria. And then uh, in the past uh, four to five years, we've been spending a lot of uh, resources, building uh, a lot of uh, content and all of that. So now we are partnering with uh, the Nollywood, you know, to create uh, content. So we're doing some uh, reality TV shows. So this is one of them. Recall that uh, I think in 2021, um, our um, Adebayo, Femi Adebayo was here. I think he was on your show here. Yes. Okay. Talking about Ilya Layo. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So this time around, we are uh, doing a screen perfect. And mm -hmm. then the screen perfect is just about uh, um, um, promoting a young Right. Nollywood uh, talents. Talent. Okay. Yes, I'm looking at the um, advertorial. I can see Shafi Bello, Bola Leninolo, and a couple of others. Yes. What exactly would they be doing there? Yes, the first of all, um, uh, Shadikwe is uh, uh, is uh, the host. Okay. Yes. Then we have uh, AGK Aswebu. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Shafi Bello and uh, Bola Leninolo. Mm -hmm. You know. They are the judges. Oh. So um, 18 contestants are involved. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they will, uh, the winners will go home with uh, 10 million era, mm. you know, and uh, so many other prizes that uh, okay. uh, viewers out there can also uh, participate in yeah. winning. So, what time is the show uh, on Sundays, and um, which channels can viewers, you know, yes. see them? Yes, it's um, 8 p.m. every Sunday. It will run for 13 weeks, and the, the channels to look out for, uh, where you can watch those, uh, uh, the show, is uh, channel uh, ST Nollywood, and then ST uh, Novella channel. So these are very popular channels on Start Times, oh, where okay. a lot of uh, customers uh, like to watch. And the good thing is that uh, we have a different bouquet, and uh, they are spread in such a way that every one on different okay. bouquet can uh, have access to a watch. Okay, so on mobile one? app? Yes, also on the mobile app, you also can watch. And, uh, you know, our subscription is uh, very affordable. You know, our mission as a start times is to ensure that every um, home, every family can have access to digital TV at affordable price. Okay. So for those who have uh, just you know, to download uh, the start times on app, and then um, if you have a Star Times uh, decoder or the Sunday TV, you can link the app to the smart card and then you watch uh, freely, although it will uh, uh, take um, your uh, data. a little of your data, mm -hmm. but not much. But if you are not uh, a Star Times uh, subscriber currently, you also can still uh, download the Star Times on app. And of course, you can recharge uh, 1,000 error up for one month and 2,200 naira will carry you for 30 months. So you can have the opportunity to watch this uh, interesting. Yes, interesting content. Uh, so we are doing a lot and we continue to build on what we are doing currently. Okay, so I wanted to ask about the um, gifts. I know that the winner gets 10 million. Is there any other thing that will be coming in? Yes, <laughs> yes we are partners uh, like Indomie mm -hmm. and so many other companies that are partnering with us uh, in this. So, uh, viewers at home so have viewers your are getting something as yeah, well. getting some things like Indomie, Prinkles, and so many other uh, gift items. Cool, nice, well done. So looking forward to that. Um, it's premiering when do you, this Sunday? Yes, this Sunday. This Sunday, Yes. Fantastic. We introduced uh, the contestants, uh, uh, I think on Monday, okay. at a, a hotel uh, in GRA. 
And then all of the veteran actors and actresses, as you could see in that uh, video, yeah. they were all present because uh -huh. this is their thing. You know, yeah. Star Times is uh, offering them platform and uh, uh, making sure that uh, we take uh, uh, Nollywood to the next level. All right, thank you so much, sir. It was a pleasure having you on the show. We hope um, we should the best as the show starts this weekend. And I look forward to seeing what your TV looks like. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Let's go on a break. When we come back, more bad. There was a candlelight dinner, um, candlelight um, procession run for him yesterday. When we come back, we'll discuss it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Still on the issue of Mubad, we with us this morning is the Senate Committee on Entertainment Economy, led by the Chairman Senator Elisha Abo. He paid a condolence visit to the late Ilirio Lua Oladimeji Aloba, aka Mubad family. During his condolence visit, Senator Abo, who chairs the Senate Committee on Culture and Tourism, stated the government's plan to establish a commission aimed at resolving disputes among artists. This commission's purpose is to prevent issues from escalating into irreparable and unhealthy rivalries. Join us right now is the man himself, the Chairman Senate Committee on Entertainment Economy, Senator Elisha Epo. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, Mariah. Good morning. Good morning. Um, it was quite instructive to see that you went over to pay condolence visit to the family. Why did you think there was a need for you to do this at this time? Well, first of all, this is a very important issue that involves human life. Mm. A human life was lost and the interest generated by this single in incidence, both locally and internationally. If you look at the trend today, uh, some artists, celebrities, from UK, from America, all over the world, have started keen into the protest in Nigeria, justice for Mobad. It has gone global. And as a government official, we cannot continue to pay deaf ears to the cry and irrepressible voice of Nigerian people. I feel it is a duty I am duty bound to come and condole the family for three simple reasons. One, it is my local constituency, being the chairman of the Senate Committee on Creative and Entertainment Economy. It's an artist, it's an entertainer, it's a creator. And we lost a colleague. By all these things, is my colleague, because we are working in the same sector. And I felt I should go and greet the family of, 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 a, of, a, of a colleague that lost his life. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I am this, the vice chairman, Senate Committee on Youth and Sport. Mm -hmm. This is a young man, he's a youth. We've lost a, a very important young man, a boy who, if you look at the, at the story, at the, at the story, is actually uh, a product of a broken home. Because if you look at the story, the father here and the mother here, so he actually come from nothing, built himself up and become what he is today. Mm -hmm. And we have so many young people out there that he has become like a, like a, a role model to them, who, who actually are a victim of social problems in our society, but he was able to rebuild himself and, and give himself and give himself a name. Now we lost him. As a young person, I have to come down to Lagos to tell the Nigerian youth that you are not alone in this. Mm. I am with you. Okay. And government is hearing your cries. All right. Yes. Mm. So um, obviously this has become it has gone beyond um, Mubad as a person. It is still getting justice for him, but the conversation has moved into 
when we get justice for him, we must prevent this from happening to someone else. We must prevent issues of bullying. We must prevent issues where someone feels like there's... Intimidation. There's intimidation. There's nobody... I, I'm crying out on social media, but it, nothing is happening. And as much as I love the clamor now, I am worried about our ability to concretize it into, into beyond a movement, into like... No. We, we can make it a law or create, find the law in the system already that can ensure that we don't have this kind of situation again. What is your involvement? What are you doing to ensure that we don't, you don't have to come back to mourn another person in another state based on right. the fact that something went wrong? We did not follow the due process. I think this is a very important issue. Yesterday I was in the car um, from the family, Moba's family, to my hotel room. And I entered social media, Instagram. And I was listening to one of his songs. I don't speak Yoruba. I asked someone, I asked uh, my sister, Iabo Ojo, say, what is he saying in this song? She said, I am crying. She said, I am shouting. He said, someday I'm going to rest. And I felt bad. I, this boy has been crying. This boy has been speaking out, but we were not listening. None of us were listening to him. He said, he said I, I, I'm tired of crying. He said, I cry tired. He spoke in Yoruba, and he said in English again, he said, I don't cry tired. And at the end of the song, he said, someday I'm going to rest. My problems will be over. And I got emotional. I said, so all this while this boy was crying, where are we, are we? We were not listening to him when he was crying. He was knocking on our doors. Nobody was listening. And the society must begin to listen. Yeah. Our community must begin to work. Let me take example in northern Nigeria. Certain things in the north, we don't wait for the police to even take action. Mm. Community have to come together and begin to ask questions. Before you know what is happening, two, three, four people are sitting uh, a uh, the local chiefs. I yes. begin to intervene, mm. begin to call for a meeting within that particular uh, community and begin to talk about certain issues. I think our community or oh, traditional institutions need to be straightened. Yes, absolutely. Government, the establishment of these traditional institutions is not a post mm -hmm. We need to empower our, our traditional leaders and begin to solve this small, small dispute, more especially among the younger populations who have no, who have no uh, uh, attachment to, 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 to our traditional institutions yes. and, to, and, the, and, and, and to our history. Hmm. The churches have to begin to talk. The mosques have to begin to talk. We need to come out together and come out with even our, our traditional dispute re re resolution mechanisms hmm. so that we can, we, we can act like, 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 like a society. Hmm. I, think, I think something okay. needs to be done. Yes, um, thank you very much for, you know, just your support, I guess, because having government representative helps to push, you know, when things like this happen. But you are um, the chairman of the Senate Committee on Entertainment Economy, and you have been the chairman for how long now for yeah. that particular committee? Yeah, we've just been there now as a chairman. I've been there... Less than two months. Less than two months. Okay, yes. so you're still very new, I guess, in that industry. And yes. I just wanted to find out that, uh, yes, it's important to talk about communities' ballads, but in Lagos, um, very much unlike the North, it's not so grassroots oriented. Yes. So people like this need to be able to find um, institutions or, you know, places that they can go and um, report if they feel that they are being assaulted, if they feel they are being, you know, in, in some way they are, they are under attack. Yes. And I'm wondering what the committee is doing or will be doing or what did you, what was handed over to you? What was the plan concerning how 
people in this industry, artists in this industry, can find justice or can find protection or where they can go that is a safe place for them, you know, to have conversations around issues like yeah. assault or intimidation and things like that? First of all, uh, on this singular issue, because this is actually just beyond mobile. Mm -hmm. There are millions of mobiles out there mm -hmm. who are living in fear. <laughs> in their homes, in their business places, in their working places, there are millions of mobiles out there living in fear. No human being should live in fear. Mm. No human being should be running all over the place, looking over his back, turning his back, whether someone is pursuing him. Beyond that, uh, let us look at particular question that you ask, what is my committee doing? Uh, the Senate, upon resumption, in less than one week, in about four days from now, the Senate will resume. And within the first five days of the resumption of the Senate, I am proposing a bill for the establishment of Creative Economy Commission. Okay. If you look at National Communication Commission today, NCC, where you have companies like MTN, Airtel, mm. Salat, and all over, they, they, are registered, they are registered on that. Mm. And a lot of other communities, uh, I, 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 I mean companies, uh, what do you call it? This uh, dot mark and the rest of them, this underground cable that has been mm -hmm. buried mm -hmm. to take internet to your houses and satellite in the air. These are private organizations. These are private companies. Mm. But there is an agency of government, a commission that's regulating their activities, mm -hmm. supervising and even regulating them. Entertainment industry is a multi-billion dollar entertainment uh, 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 um, industry. Now, there is no, there is no commission mm. that is empowered with modern laws mm. to actually regulate and supervise this very huge uh, industry. In fact, the President Bola Ametinbu went a step further by establishing Ministry of Arts, Culture, and Creative Economy. So he realized the importance of creative economy. Mm -hmm. And he created Ministry of Creative Economy. Look at Hollywood today in the US. How, do you know how many films is, uh, is being rolled in the U.S. every year? Do you know how much generating to the U.S. government, uh, uh, to the U.S. GDP? Do you know how many songs released by artists? Mm. Uh, the, it, it's bringing money to the country. Now, in Nigeria today, we have Netflix, we have YouTube, we have Amazon, we have all over this uh, social media and entertainment that, that, that is uh, that's actually permeated into our own uh, uh, into our system, but there's no specific agency of government that is regulating yeah. mm. uh, this, uh, uh, this industry. Yeah. So in the next one to two weeks, the first reading will go. That is for the creation of uh, Creative right. Economy right. Commission. Part of this commission will be in charge of resolving dispute yeah. okay. between artists and the record label. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is record label and their assignees. Mm. It is a business. Sometimes business can go sour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not everything that human beings manage well. Yeah. True. Sometimes we may find wanting in how we manage our colleagues. Yeah. Sometimes we even found wanting in how we manage even our own children at home. Yeah. Talk more of a business deal. Yeah. Sometimes it can go very sour, it can even go bitter. Yeah. Mm. When it moves from sweet to bitter, where are we going to? Mm. Can we resolve to the street? As we have seen someone uh, mobile, I saw, I watched a, a, a video on, on, on the internet where someone took a cane and was flogging mobile and uh, shooting a female wheelchair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Business went sour. Yeah. Where will mobile go to? Where will the record label go to? Mm. Because rebel, record labels too need to be protected yeah. beyond sentiment. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. You establish a record label company as a business for you. And you hired 
an artist be part of the record label. So the artists have to live according to the agreement. So this is exactly what we want to do so that we can have an agency of government where artists can run to or record label okay. can run to. Let me let this yeah. jump in here. So um, I like the idea of having that creative commission uh, for conflict resolution. I think is a step in the right direction. But I know that some of these things take time to finally formalize and then established. And I'm wondering in the interim, is it possible that, because we know right now that any who has a dispute the first thing is to go to the police mm -hmm. is it social possible media. Or, uh, social media for people <laughs> that want to go there but normally you would go to the police which mobad had done initially yeah. you know when he alleged that he was being bullied yeah. so i'm wondering uh, instead of okay while we are working on getting that creative commission set up can they have a table in the police to handle this sort of issue. So when it comes to the police, there's, you know, like you have the human rights mm -hmm. um, department in the, the police. Yeah. Yes. It comes to a table in the police that will, in, in the interim, liaise, they are still police officers, but they are equipped with this sort of um, conflict resolution to handle the matter. Why we now start doing the fine details of mm -hmm. first reading, second reading, third reading, because we don't know how long uh, this is going to take. And more people- There are many, may, disputes, there are on many disputes on ground already. There are people are now saying that it's better that we start resolving right now. Yeah. In the first place, thank you, my sister. In the first place, like I said, the issue of mobile is just uh, one issue. There are so many issues out there. Mm -hmm. The police, should be empowered to investigate issues and no matter who you are, to invite you to come and write statement, nobody's above the law, mm -hmm. to write statement before the police and the police must investigate it conclusively. Yeah. And there's how many tables will we open? How many desks do we open? Mm -hmm. You open desk for this, particular uh, sector, you open desk for this, yeah. gender violence, uh, child this, uh, this one for business. How many desks will you open yeah. in the police stations? That means there will be too many desks there. <laughs> How, but what I believe is that I am yet to discuss to, 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 to get documents from the police because definitely Senate will investigate this. Absolutely. Okay. Definitely. We are not leaving it to the police alone. Okay. We will ask the police when the matter was supported them from the beginning, what did they do? Yeah. Was there a complaint? Who received the complaint and what happened that time? Because I believe if, like I said, I'm, I'm yet to see it, I am a number one pro-police legislature in Nigeria. Mm. Virtually, because I know the importance of having a, a working police, a motivated police. We have not been having that, and that's why internal security has collapsed. Right. When we go back, we will ask what actually happened. This I will, I will come with a motion, and I will discuss with Senator Abiru, who is actually one uh, senator from Lagos, yes. and uh, we will come together and discuss so that this motion will come, and we will also launch an investigation into this matter, because it's a Nigerian project yeah. now. All right, let me ask you about your visit to the family. What did you see? What did you make of the entire situation? Who did you speak to? And what was said um, to the family at the time? Ha, ah, it, is, it is difficult to look into the eyes of a grieving mother. Mm. It is uh, something that I don't want to be in the position of doing it. A mother lost her son. You are sitting next to her and then looking into her ears, into her eyes. You are right, your ears is hearing her, her groan as if she is giving birth to another baby, the pain that is in her. It is a very difficult thing. And I had to bear the pain there. If you look at your point, I was actually crying because the woman was in pain. You see, apart from just losing a son, losing a son who is a star a breadwinner of the family, mm -hmm. the, 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 the light in that home has been put off. The pain is there. And um, it wasn't so good. But we gave her assurance because she said that she's been threatened, she's under threat, and I assured her that nobody will threaten you. Nobody will come here. Nobody. 
Nobody will come and threaten you. As a matter of fact, all those that are accusing, they're even on their own. Mm. So no, they don't even have time now to how some people say, Taka ake iba naka yaba. Mm. Meaning when they are pursuing you, you don't ask where's my shoe. Mm. You throw the shoe because you are now trying to save your life. You're not trying to save your distance. I like you, Senator Fai Kutala ladies, to touch on this issue of cultism and entertainment industry. What do you make of it? Because many believe that they are very almost interrelated in the sense that many cultists are financiers of many of this, of this industry in many ways. Many of them have supported many of these artists. Um, even the cultists are, are involved in drug dealing. There's so many allegations here that we don't even know which is which. Our investigations are ongoing. But in your, from your own outward, outward look inwards, what do you make of the issue of cultism and how prevalent it's, it's almost been in this, in this industry in recent times? Yes, I have heard a lot of stories because uh, when uh, Yabo Ojo gave out a telephone number on the, on the internet saying, if you have anything, you had anything, you, you saw anything, send it to this number. And the phone was just right before me, and it was like a live stream. Mm. <laughs> Messages you are going in. 1,840 to 2,000 plus, to 3,000 plus. So something <laughs> is happening. So if there's a helpline where certain things can go and without necessarily the sender being exposed to danger, means that a lot of, a, a lot of, uh, of revelations will be made. And my eyes opened yesterday. When she handed the phone to me, she said, see this. And I was going through some of those things. I say a lot, a lot is happening right before us that we don't know it is happening. Cultism, a situation where a gang rival or another gang rival all bearing arms, first of all, it is illegal to carry arms. And government need to be hard, very hard on these issues. Drug peddling mm. have destroyed so many lives. Mm -hmm. You will never understand the, the, the dangers of drug abuse until you are relative or you are friend, mm. become hooked on drug, becomes a junkie, a brilliant young man, mm. a promising soul is now reliant on drugs to survive. No longer eats food. Mm. Just want alcohol, mm. we, and maybe sniff cocaine. And he's become something like this, a shadow of his former self. And you are seeing your loved one being wasted by somebody who imported drug into the country. It is painful. Mm. And NDLA have to stand up, and I believe Bubu Marwa is doing much about that. So, um, you know, when people are talking, people have jumped on this, it's trending. So if you don't talk about it, they would even harass you, <laughs> if you um, on social media right now. But we don't want just talks, you know. We, yeah. don't want to, we don't want to just seem like, oh, we're part of it. But when the chips are down, everybody goes back to um, into hiding and protecting their own interests. Um, what would we, you already said we would we'll be expecting that in the next, in the next two weeks we would have, you will push the bill. Yes. And that's on that perspective. Right. You also said that there would be a follow-up so that there, I want us to be sure of what the viewers can hold you accountable for that. We're going to, the Senate would investigate the, the, um, the police to get information about how that process went to be sure that we are getting justice for him. The bill will prevent future occurrence. What about the family and compensations? Mm. Because um, he's left a wife, he's left a yes. son, he's left parents, a younger sister. Like you mentioned, he was a breadwinner. There are GoFundMe GoFund going on. People are doing donations in different areas. Before we turn it into a business, how do we address that part? So you've addressed his justice, you've addressed prevention. Can we address compensation? Yes, uh, first of all, uh, a case of murder has not been established yet. Mm -hmm. Let us not jump the gun. Uh, you compensate someone when there is an established commission mm. or omission. Yeah. In this case, investigation is still ongoing. However, 
uh, on compassionate ground. When I went there yesterday, you didn't, you didn't see in any news anywhere that I made a donation. But I did. I, did, I gave my own donation to the family. Mm. But it's not, a, it's, not, it's not for news. It's not meant for entertainment. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not a political thing. Mm. Okay. It is something uh, like in the Bible, the Bible says, when you are given an offering, your left hand shall not know what your right hand is given. So that is, that is biblical law. So when I went there yesterday, I gave my own donation. And somebody will now say, why are you saying it now? I'm saying it so that you can give your own. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I believe the third reading of the NSAS fund will soon come before the National Assembly. The NSAS fund uh, was established, even though the name will be changed slightly now, to cover other victims. Mm. Federal government is actually creating a victim, some sort of a victim support fund, where a non-victim of, uh, of, of violence or any other thing could be able to assess government funding to take care of their family. But before this comes into four, you people are sitting on this table. The biggest form of giving is when millions of people come together to give their small, 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 small penny. Assuming one million Nigerians say they are giving one one thousand naira each, calculate one thousand times one million people. That is a huge money. Mm -hmm. So you have changed the history of that family. Just imagine, one million Nigerians, each one of us give even 500 naira. 500 naira, one million people. You have raised a lot of money. But this has to be coordinated, and a committee has been put in place so that we can coordinate this giving. So I am calling on uh, people like you, who are actually, we are seeing your faces every day, who people trust, who people can be held accountable, to come up with a clear-cut uh, uh, fundraising. Uh, that was the question. Senator, Senator, because they already had, Senator, like, I've seen Senator, three Senator, GoFundMe Senator, by three yes. different people. There are children in the hospitals that need GoFundMe. Yeah. Yes. There are people who need kidney transplant, as yeah. I'm speaking to you right now. Yes. When it comes to GoFundMe, trust me, there's so much people out there yes. who, who can debate and say, why would I put my money here or not there? So it's not an issue. Mm. But yes. it's important for us to... Use that symbolic to show that this, this industry this in, um, industry changes based on what happened to mobile. Yeah. Yes. But when it comes to GoFundMe, anybody can raise funds for yeah. so many things. Because trust me, if you want to raise funds, ah. they are... Yeah, my, yeah. My, my question was even to get even to, how okay. to ensure that the money is being raised. Somebody with authority can say, I know that these people are raising funds. Can we be sure that it's getting to so the people the who yeah. actually... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yes, um, so as we know, the reason we're hearing about, mm -hmm. you know, MOBAD really is because Ni Nigerian youth decided to take this up. Yes. And protest it and insist that government be involved in some way. Um, so um, there's some things that are out there, you know, that I have picked on. And this is um, the fact that there's an, uh, uh, an autopsy that's been done. You know, his body was exhumed and mm. was they need asking for assurances that this will be done well and will be done right, that there will be no cut, uh, cutting corners or someone influencing anyone. You made some assurances earlier on. I don't know if this is something you can also assure Nigerians or the youth that this will be done um, without any biases and we'll, we'll hear exactly what you know, the um, coroner finds out. I want to assure you, you see, who will the police hide? We know those people that have already been accused on the social media. Mm. Sam Larry, Nera Mali, and the rest of them. That's what we see on the social media. Yeah. It's all over, so I'm not accusing anybody. I'm just reading what is, what is trending on the social media. And uh, who among them will the federal government cover? None of them. You see, we, we must begin to trust institutions. I spoke with... with uh, my big elder brother and father, Femi Folono, SAM. He wrote a letter to the district of Lagos to conduct an inquest 
And as of yesterday, I spoke with Femi Folona, as I'm talking to you now, he's airborne, he's coming to Lagos, and he's coming on this issue. Mm. And we are meeting this afternoon with, with Femi Folona on this matter. So we are all putting our hands together to ensure that this is done within record time. But I want to also assure the youth, apart from the fact that the writing will be done, I want to assure them that it will be done diligently. Right. When you rush police and they didn't do diligent investigation, mm. When you go to court, the court will throw it out mm -hmm. because it was not diligently investigated. Mm -hmm. So when there's no diligent investigation, then there won't be diligent prosecution. Right. So let us give them time to do a diligent work. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. So um, I would like to hear your advice for uh, the youths right now. Um, I hear yesterday they had a peaceful protest. Protests have been going on uh, peacefully. What would you tell them in terms of um, how they should conduct themselves this period, how they should wait on the reports that are going to be coming and what more they can begin to do to ensure that we still, you know, find a way to see justice. I call on the youth of this country. Like I said earlier, I am not just the, the chairman of the Committee on Entertainment or Creative Economy, but I'm also the vice chairman of the Committee on Youth. Mm -hmm. I am a youth also. I won election at that eight years. And the youth should not take the loss of this country in their hands. We understand sometimes what protest can result in. Some bad elements can hijack it and will turn into something else. Yeah. Hmm. I'm calling on the youth, there's no need to protest. No need to protest. What you are calling government to do, they are already doing it. Go back home. Let us channel our energy toward raising funds for my bad family. And we, I will also call, now that the man or the young man will not even be allowed to rest in peace because his dead body was exhumed. So that means there, was, there will be another burial. Mm -hmm. He'll be buried for the second time. Let us organize a befitting burial for him so that when the time comes to bury him again, we'll give him a befitting burial. And, uh, and I call on Lagos state government because of the interest shown in this matter. Governor shall name a street after Mobad. Uh, That's what I'm calling to immortalize him. Wow. Okay. Really? Thank okay. you very much. We have to wrap up with yeah. you, but I think um, you've really share with us your, your, your thoughts on mobile. I mean, as, as you said, it's a big issue. Nigerians are really talking about this. And, yes. I, and it's quite impressive to see how the youth have been united in this. It's also important that after all is said and done, we also find a way to get some learning curves, which you've said, hopefully the commission, the Creative Commission would help in that. And also the issue of the NDA, we, think we couldn't touch on that because lots of drugs have been used, lots of um, the, the issues of abuse, intimidation, bullying going on. These are things that need to be addressed and we're hoping that the commission in future will be able to help and address some of these issues thank you so much sir for joining us this morning thank you marayo that is all we can take on this segment stay with us we'll be right back stay tuned your view will be right back Thanks for staying with us. Moving on now to other matters in the celebrity kingdom. So, Pastor Jimmy Odukoya mm -hmm. was recently anointed as the next general overseer. Actually, officially, I think by September 30th, they're going to do it in church. But it was announced by the church that it's going to be handing over. And there have been talks here and there saying that, um, is it right for an actor to become a pastor? Uh, we've seen recently how the new show of Obumo Show was a pastor of the RCCG. Um, this also is an actor. He's a, he's a practicing actor. And um, he's going to be not just a pastor. He's not always been a pastor. But he's the general overseer. Now, that's a huge responsibility. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think it was a great idea? Do you think 
Aside from the fact that I was spiritually anointed, as in God was when I told them to put in the other part. <laughs> but what are your thoughts on this decision? Call us on 081 You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your TVC so we can read your tweets. So people don't Talk agree. So, people, so there, are, there are many sides. Uh, sides. So people don't agree that it was, um, when you said it was God that, that one, even me, I was like, yeah, you in the meeting with them when God told them, <laughs> let's leave the God factor out of it. Now only God knows what God talk. Was prayerfully determined. Now only God knows what God talk. <laughs> because if we follow what God talk or what devil talk, we will miss road. Mm. There are many people that do things and say God told me to do it, but only God knows that he did not tell them. Ah, some people do say they say it's the devil that told me to do it. Only the devil knows that he's watching what is going on here. So for me, I want to discuss um, the appointment of Pastor Jimmy as general overseer from the perspective of um, is it right for a family member to take over a spiritual platform? Or is it right for the spiritual platform and, as an entity to be allowed to continue to grow in the um, position that is made? Like, <coughs> this is an institution. Mm. Then it, it brings me to, as a business person, do I necessarily want my children to take over me? Mm. If they're competent, yes. If I've built a good business, if my kids are competent, I would want them to take over. If they are not, I would want the institution to continue to run. That's what is most important, that the institution runs. And on social media, there, were, there was a lot of bashing before we now had Christians praising. But the first thing that came out was bash, bash, bash. People were bashing the fact that himself, Pastor Jimmy, and his sister are now going to become the general, um, the pastor and associates senior pastors of the church that it shouldn't have been that way. There are other people that have been in the church who mm. are, who could have um, stepped into that role. Okay. Especially following the example of um, Redeem, <clears throat> where we had, at least Redeem is one of the biggest local churches, yes. it's not even one of the biggest, mm. biggest, biggest local church mm. that has gone from one generation to another. Mm. So it is a case of now, are we going to now have Redeem being handed over to... And we've also had Idahosa, who have also moved from the father, father to the son. To so son. we've seen successful transitions from father to children. We've seen T.D. Jakes also, I mean, his, his daughter is a pastor, mm. but she's also, you know, so Very we've much. seen it happen. So it's not yeah. as if it's never heard before. But let me come so, to you, Maria. Yeah, so this? for me too, at first, my initial <laughs> response yeah, was like, oh, why are we doing it this way, you know, it, like... Um, it just seemed like a family affair and I thought, you know, and I wanted, especially with this family, you know, you just, since his mother, you just have this, you feel like you have a connection, you feel like you know yeah, them because right. you've been there from the very beginning. So I, I, it didn't, I didn't quite understand it, but I would say I read an article which opened my eyes and I agree with it and it was referring to the Bible and it says that um, for those, um, the priesthood was actually meant to be moved from generation to the generation. So Aaron and his sons we would hear in the Bible. And, and then also talked about Eli. So Eli was a prophet, of course, dedicated, dedicated to God, but he could not hand over to his children because his children were known to be badly behaved. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a blessing for you to be able to move from your own self and hand over to your child. Right. So it means, see with Eli, God says, yes, he was dedicated, but his parenting was not yeah. right, and that was why those, his sons behaved badly. Mm. So it shows that you have done well spiritually mm. and also raised children that can take over from you. So when I saw it in that light, I was like, okay, that is good. It's grace, it's blessing, and I don't have a problem. Yeah, she thoughts, took the thoughts just right <laughs> out of my mouth. Right. Yes, so and also I've known um, Pastor Jay. He's always been a pastor before he ventured into acting. acting. And um, he, he used to be a rapper. Yes, that was when I met him. And I've always known him to be spirit-filled. I've always known that there's a way they have raised those kids. The girl, Tolu, the younger sister. And if you see the three of them, you can feel the presence of God just having a normal conversation with them. I have known to that extent. And I also know that God's gift is to be used. Um, it's not a mistake that he went into acting. He's a wonderful actor who moved from Nollywood to uh, Hollywood, you know. Uh, in an industry he just spent about six years and where people are struggling to even make it in the Nollywood, his excellence stood him out. And that's the spirit of God. Mm. So because um, it's acting does not mean he doesn't know his God anymore, does not mean he doesn't have the call on his life anymore. We judged 
so much. We became so hypocritical. They pointed his hair, he had dreadlocks. Jesus did not cut hair. Samson did not cut hair. He didn't take away the spirit of God in them. And I think God is using this generation to sort of open our eyes to what's most important than the... The physical things we look out for, okay, oh, this person has tattoo, or the, the, the music we sing in the churches, the oh, Yibo musicians all have tattoos and they wear <laughs> earrings. And we sing it and we lift up our hands to heaven and we connect. So the most important thing is, um, how are these people raised? Those people who knew them and allowed this to happen without questioning, knew them from childhood and they know that these people are able to carry on the blessings of, you know, God into the lives of the many people they are going to be reaching out to. So I think Nigerians should just calm down mm. and let us observe. Mm. God's blessings are without, um, yeah. how, how is it? Let that? me take this me. Um, call <laughs> from Yemi. He's been holding for a minute. Good morning, Yemi. Thanks for calling. Hi, good morning, Good morning. Uh, my name is Yemi Adam, who I'm calling from London. Yes, go ahead. I'm so sorry what I'm going to say. I don't care how anybody says. Nigerian like, churches are just in the That's my thing. I think it's a family business. It's a family business. It's a family business. Oh. Yeah, can I respond to that? Yeah. It's also okay if it's a family business. It's me they called. God called me. And my child. probably by the time God called me, I heard that if I raise my children well, they can take over. Let God call you, build your own family and build your own business. So let's, I, I'm not saying that uh, the churches are not run as businesses. We all know that aspect of it. But to judge a man's calling because you think he should have gone to an outsider, no, now. It, I, I don't think it's the right thing to do. I think the focus should be on, can this person lead the flock? Mm. Can the flock trust him enough to lead them? And once that is sorted... Everything else is okay. okay. So oh, okay. I, know, I know both. I, I follow both. Um, um, Tolu and um, Jimmy and I would say that there are people that never hid their faith you know there are people that have never hid the fact that they have a calling mm. there are people that have always run a ministry I pray with um, Tolu she does she does it's not even popular she has a, a, um, a prayer team um, on Instagram that they've been praying even before Praying became a social media thing and they still do it till now and it's a team yeah it's huge so I feel that at the end of the day, we are all in support of, because we know the people. Yeah. So we are judging based on character. But it's another part of when you are building an institution, there is a generational shift. And it is easy for us to sit down and expect that you should go to another person in the rank of Pastor uh, Taiwo Dukoya. In actual fact, it should move down the generation. Yeah. Because the kind of people that Pastor Jimmy would that reach we out connect to. with mm. are totally different from those that are currently connect that we're connecting with um, Pastor Taiwo. And that is important. There's another angle when when we talk about spiritual things and we try to put the Naira and Kobo, we will miss out on a huge opportunity to mm. see the positive part of what they're doing. Yes, there's money. There's a lot of money in spiritual business. Spiritual business is big business. Mm. Spiritual business, ha. There are a lot of merchandising, there are goods and services, there are money-making opportunity. But if we look at the money, even in the Bible times, they were doing business in the, in the temples. And in the case of... Jesus <laughs> chased them away because it was being done wrong. There was corruption in the temple. So we cannot remove money and spirituality, but we must ensure that the Take values hand hand. that are under it, underneath the power in it is right. Take this call from Kenny. He's been holding for a minute. Good morning, Kenny. Thanks for calling. You're live. Go ahead, please. I'm a Sorry. pastor. Yes, sir. Uh, and I want to tell you this. If you know the level of disloyalty inside church, you will know that what these people did is the best. People that you see that are following all you know, this kind of thing, if you measure their level of loyalty, it's better to please you. People that are looking from outside may think that things are going on well. But when you are inside, you will know that people that you are seeing, they are lawyer, they are this and that, they are not really. So it is better to just play safe. You know, let your mistake be with you. If you are going to be any, God bless you. All right. Thank you very much. Come to you, Mario. Yes. Um, so the second part of this conversation I want to talk about is about the way that he looks. Yeah. And um, we would, I know this is a conversation that we're struggling with, especially, you know, like in the Bible, it almost makes it clear, like some things it says, it does not, it does not expect believers to have tattoos, you know. And um, 
So he, he looks like he's a physical embodiment of all the things that in the Bible it says do not you know, be. Yeah. But um, the only thing I disagree with now, the conversation is the hair. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is the hair that grows out of from his skull. God made that hair. <laughs> it's coming out from his, his you know, skull. We have um, priests and pastors that we revere and admire who have jerry curled hair and things like that. And we have all their followers trying to have that sort of hair. And we've never brought that hair into question. But the African man that is wearing the African hair, and I feel that conversation has a lot to do with also our acceptance of yeah. who we are. Then um, I also said, you know what? I believe that there are prophets for different seasons. Mm. When I was in university, there used to be this group. I can't remember exactly. I think it was like a Song of David or Sons of David or something like that. They were young, cool kids mm. who were Christians. And finally, People who were cool and, you know, wanted to, felt like, okay, we found a place that we belong. So you're cool, but ah, these church people, they are not, they don't seem to, they are superstitious. They don't, you know, they are so backward and maybe they are thinking. But here, these people, just like us, speak our language, dress like us, understand our, you know, and they are praising God. Right. So I'm looking at um, Pastor Jimmy and I'm like, have we looked around us recently? Have you gone out recently? Have you seen our young boys? Mm. Do you see what, what they look uh, like? They who do you think, nails? if we want them in church, who do you think that they'll be attracted to? Who Thanks do you think that they'll relate? Mara, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me pause you for a second because this is a conversation I had recently with my husband and we did a video on it um, and posted it um, yesterday. And his view was very conventional and very... Um, uh, and he felt that, listen, the, his look doesn't depict what we know as pastors mm. and that and i was trying to explain to him it's a global village and um people even minister wherever you are so fountain of life said no Mara, fountain of love is in Lukwaju. it's not global it is me it's here. <laughs> but but what was interesting about the conversation was that the cameraman who was handling is a youth mm -hmm. and when femi finished he said i disagree with you sir because mm -hmm. you're speaking based on your own filter yeah. your own you're seeing things through that because your in your own time yeah it was that, that it was this it, way. That, that's how that's how it is. Mm -hmm. By the time we have more of a Jimmy, Pastor Jimmy, the way he looks, there'll be more oh, pastors like muscles. him. Yeah. There'll be more people muscles. More people will be like him and will connect with him more yeah. because what he's doing is bringing. There's a seventy percent of youth yeah. who don't even want to go to church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we see, if we see people like us, which is what you just, just mm -hmm. said, we are more attractive. So if you think the former system of daddy wearing suit, yeah. mommy Joe wearing a hat is right. going to drag us to church, mm. that, that, that that time has gone. Yeah, it has. So it was quite an interesting conversation yeah. to see. But but according to he, he still felt that listen. You, you can how, 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 how much do we want to move the bar? Because we keep accepting these things. For example, you say the girl is wearing her skimpy looking tight dress and dress. Let her be. You don't know her heart. But let her be. But you don't know. She's also maybe tempting or um, um, somebody in church. So there are two ways of looking at it. Okay, we have to so, be very sure. Where, so, how so, far do we drag, so we drag like this line? We like to speak sometimes like we are God's mouthpiece. Mm. Mm. He created us differently for a reason. Everybody has their markets. Everybody has the souls. If you're in, in, into ministry, you have the kind of souls that are already attached to you, that your, the, the way you think, the way you dress, the way you act will be the ones to pull, will be what will pull them to come to the knowledge of God. As long as you're not using that position to defraud people, as long as you know that you have the calling and you're living right. It's not about the hair. It's not about the clothes. Just be decent in what you do. And how do we define decency? Back in the days that we always like to go to, men were wearing earrings. Mm -hmm. Men started wearing high heels. High heels were not designed originally for women. They were designed for men. You when the people, yes, the, when the people of old had to collect their gold to give to the, um, when they didn't see Moses after a while in the mountain, they collected gold earrings and everything from their sons and their daughters. What do you think their sons were doing with it? So we always sit from our own lens, like you rightly said, and say, okay, because there's something I read recently. We said, we made God in our own image. Mm. Ah. We made God in our own image. Mm. Because every climb and every culture has a representation of who they think God should be or how he looks or how he is. He's a man, he's a woman, he has a beard, he has this. We made God in our own image. But that is not how God works. We have different expressions. And those expressions are allowed. And those expressions have a message that they are passing. So 
for someone like a very conventional, there are some very conventional people that me, I will not go to their church because they will bore me out of my skin. But for someone like a Pastor Jimmy, I am a candidate. I will go to his church because he has the vibrancy. For someone like T.D. Jakes and the daughter, remember during the daughter's time when she got pregnant, she did, it, yeah. this happened and all of that, she was like, this person is ruled out. She can never be. But God is using her in amazing ways compared to even those very conventional yeah. people. Let me so let's just trust. Mm. If we have the spirit of God and you hear somebody with the spirit of God, you will know. Just trust the spirit Let of God in you. Take this call from Ambrose. been holding. Good morning, Ambrose. You're live. Good morning, Mariah. Good morning. My name is Ambrose. I'm calling from Abuja. Ambrose Aguirre. Yes. Thanks. Um, first of all, the word of God doesn't change. Generation from generation goes. The word of God remains the same. Cannot say that because of the new generation that we have to change. No. Two, so, if you read 10 for Richard chapter 11 verse 14, it's clearly stated that men should not carry long hair. What is church? What is the body of Christ? We are a temple. When the Christ directed Peter, say you are the rock upon you are upon this church. It is says a family business. So we should get it right that they come here, the pastor comes, goes, the children will take over. No. So church is the body of Christ. It's not a family business. And as a pastor, it would be different from unbelievers. Mariah, can you go to the bank? And you see a bank are wearing long hair, you will see bank with that person. Thanks and God bless you, my dear sir. They're wearing beards now. I mean, so I was going to also say, you know, as an example to the fact that I believe that they are prophets for different season, and I do not think that it means that God's word is changing. It just means that the world changes and you need a prophet that can, you know, connect during that time. We know the um, story. We know how the disciples, um, you know, God, um, Jesus called them. They were mostly illiterate, you know, um, barely educated, fishermen, you know. But then we have, then we have, People like Paul, you know, Saul. And we know that he took the gospel to Rome, the Romans. The reason why we have widespread Christianity was because of him. And he was a different type of person, disciple, than the, you know, than the original apostles. He was educated. He was exposed. And that was the sort of person that could connect with, um, you know, when he went, um, those who were non-Jews. And... If he had insisted, because there are things about circumcision, there are some things he said that, no, I don't think this is as important as the word of God. This is not what God is exactly saying. And some of the things could be let go for, um, for the word of God, um, for the gospel. If he had insisted, or if they had insisted because he was not Jew, or you were not circumcised, or you were not all these, you know, tenets that had been put, because that was really based on the culture of Judaism. The Christianity that we know, as, as we know of it today, would not have, you know, been as widespread or what Paul did with the Romans. So I'm just saying that God, God's word does not change. But whether we like it or not, we live in an evolving world, you know, and we need people who are able to call our children back to God. Especially, I was going somewhere when you caught me earlier, especially I was talking about the way our young people are dressed, especially our boys. Many of the older generation cannot relate they feel that our boys have become effeminate. They're spending too much time grooming themselves, wearing rings and looking a certain way. And, they, and so we have put them in boxes. But those children know that, you know what? You don't need to put me in a box. I, I am everything else. This is just my look. And then I have someone in church who looks like me, who understands that I can be a pastor, I can be a doctor, I can be intelligent, I can be smart, I can be kind, I can be everything and still look a certain way and it does not affect me. And because of that generational divide, we need people like them, Jimmy or Dukoya, to sort of bridge that gap for us and our kids. All right, let's take a few comments so we very wrap up. Um, um, I was saying that, I, I, I get that argument, but I also understand the part of, I come to church, my pastors, biceps, triceps, the whole muscle, looking hot with the dreadlocks, with the tattoos, you know, and I'm like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, am I going to listen to what they're saying at all? You know, I'm just saying that that is the part of, that's the reason why even churches say, dress a certain way. If you're going to be on the altar, you cut your hair, you shave this, you know, look a certain way. So you're not distracting you your audience. You're just saying that they are very, they are very, yeah. but, but we must but, accept the fact yes. that 
That's think, why we, there are many churches. Yeah. There'll be those that will serve the strict ones, mm -hmm. and we must also not leave, nobody should be left behind. behind. Fantastic. That is extremely important for That's what's I have the comment from my auntie, Mrs. Um, Shola Adeshokon. She said, what RCCG has expanded to these days is largely due to likes of Pastor Tony Rapo, Pastor Itua, Pastor Idowi Lumayede, and all that. We brought in our own type of people, their classmates and age mates, to come to accept Christ and worship, not the way our parents used to do back. So, as you said, mm -hmm. every generation yeah. has... The point. So, the pastor, of today, pastor, pastor, of 50 years. Years. and even when we go abroad, even the redeems. When we, I went to redeem abroad, it was a different time. So, so <laughs> that's a different topic. <laughs> For another day, <laughs> discuss it. So, so it, yeah. it works based on location. Yeah. You cannot go there culture. and be looking. So it's yeah. culture. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly so what that young man was saying. Focus on the heart. Everything. Because a rich and heart. And spirit of God. The fruits of the spirit. And if a neat looking, decent looking person might be hiding a vicious inner. Man, true. So yeah. let us not yeah. in any way look at the but body but I, and think that that is. You're right. I don't even want to put it that way. So let it not look like those who dress well and are, mm. have, are conservative may have Evil something hands. hidden. Just know that don't judge no, anybody. no man will be left behind in this mm. race. Yeah. Words, mm. We all love God, yeah. them. and we should all be allowed to serve God. In our different ways. In our different expressions. Even looking naked. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's not fair. fair. That's not fair. That's all we can take on today's show. Have a fabulous weekend. We'll see you Monday. Bye for now.